If you listen to Josh Hart and some of the Knicks lately, you kind of knew this would be coming. The breaking news today that Julius Randle is done for the season. Woj reporting that he'll have surgery on his right shoulder, which will table him until next season. Randle hasn't played since January 27th when he dislocated the shoulder. Rehab didn't help. Doctors told Randle that the instability in the joint made it unsafe for him to play. And for more on this, we bring in our NBA reporter, Tim Bontemps. So, Tim, I know you're in Miami there with the Sixers, and we're going to get to Joel Embiid and his story in just a minute. But first, uh, Julius Randle, where do the Knicks go from here? Well, David, this is obviously a crushing blow to a Knicks team that if you go back to the start of January when they traded for OG Ananobi, through those first 14 games with OG Ananobi and Julius Randle on the court, the Knicks looked like one of the best teams in the entire NBA. They went 12-2 and two in those games. They were outscoring teams by 15 points per 100 possessions. And it looked like that OG trade could lift the Knicks into championship contention territory. But ever since Julius Randle went to the ground at MSG when he took a charge from Jaime Jaquez from the Miami Heat, will be playing tonight, as you said, against Joel Embiid and the Sixers, Randle has been trying to come back from that shoulder injury, and he's been in a controlled contact phase of his rehab for the past several weeks. And you'd see him out on the court at MSG before games, maniacally working out, trying to get to a place where he could play. But the longer he stayed in that controlled contact phase of his rehab and didn't progress to five-on-five -five full contact, you sort of wondered if this was going to be the outcome for him. And as you mentioned, Josh Hart, after the loss to Oklahoma City on Sunday night at MSG, said he and the Knicks are planning to be pleasantly surprised if either OG Ananobi or Julius Randle come back. Obviously, we now know that Julius Randle won't be back. And as you mentioned, Adrian Wojnarowski reported earlier today that not only will Randle have this surgery, but it will be reevaluated in five months. So we're not, it, it is not entirely clear, even if the surgery goes perfectly well, that he'll be ready for the start of the 24-25 season. But obviously, Randall and the Knicks spent the last couple months working really hard trying to get him on the court for this playoff push and what's been a, a terrific season for the Knicks, who are still trying to get home court advantage in the East. And now if they're going to do it, they're going to do it without Julius Randall. Yeah, devastating blow for the Knicks, Knicks team right, right now. Fifth in the East and, and trying to make up ground, but it doesn't look great for them at this point. All right, the reason we were going to have you on, Tim, was it was Sixers and Heat and Joel Embiid, who came back Tuesday, had a really nice game, 24 points in 29 minutes, but afterward had some comments about not feeling good. It's expected he's not going to feel 100% physically, but he made reference to being depressed during his recuperation. It just sort of was concerning. What are you hearing about Embiid ahead of tonight's game? Well, just to clarify a little bit, David, what Embiid was talking about was he's obviously dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his career. And he said that the rehab process for this injury and the fact that he suffered this injury when Jonathan Kaminga fell on that left leg in Golden State at the end of January was as depressed as he's been coming back from an injury in his career. And I think part of that, David, is frankly because of just how dominant Joel Embiid was playing. Remember, he's coming off winning his first MVP last year. He was averaging more points than minutes played, something no one other than Wilt Chamberlain has ever done in the history of the league. And he had the Sixers, even after the James Harden trade, right in the middle of the mix to be in a top four seed in the Eastern Conference. So now, as you said, Embiid was able to play 29 minutes on Tuesday, felt good physically coming out of that game. He is questionable for tonight's game, along with Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris. We'll find out later about all three of them. But the Sixers are used to Joel Embiid being questionable. He's regularly questionable for games and then is able to go. And Embiid himself said Tuesday, as long as there's no setbacks with that knee, and he was here at the Kasaya Center and participated in shoot-around, he will be able to go tonight. So we'll see in a couple hours where that sits. All right. Sixers currently in the eighth spot. That's a play-in position. We'll see where they wind up as uh, we really are rounding up the, the end of the season here. Tim, giving us the very latest from Miami.